All right, well, despite the colonel's death, NATO has yet to announce the end of its seven-month-long bombing campaign in Libya. What started off as a mission to protect civilians quickly targeted a dictator who had fallen out of favor with the West. Gaddafi never lived to see his trial for war crimes at The Hague. As RT's Gay Nature Chakyan reports, he could simply have been worth more dead than alive to the alliance. Hillary Clinton on a surprise visit to Tripoli, days before the killing of the ousted Libyan leader where she was quoted as saying the U.S. hopes to see Qaddafi killed or captured soon. The captured scenario might have put Qaddafi in the toppled Egyptian leader's troops, or those of Iraq's Saddam Hussein. But a trial over Colonel Qaddafi would have no doubt steered even more controversy. The death of Qaddafi was very convenient for the big European powers, for the U.S. If he went to The Hague, he would spill the beans about all the dirty deals, there are the stuff of real politic between the West in a developing country like Libya. Nobody wanted that. Libyan transitional government officials say Colonel Qaddafi was cornered in a drain underneath a road in open countryside near the city of Sirt. Please don't shoot was allegedly heard at the site. Many point out similarities to the capture of Saddam Hussein. He was discovered in a small underground hole concealed next to farm buildings near his own hometown. But unlike Saddam, who was captured alive by U.S. forces, Colonel Qaddafi was reportedly shot dead by Libyan transitional authorities, not without the help of the U.S. An American defense official claimed a U.S. Predator drone along with a French fighter jet hit Qaddafi's convoy Thursday morning as they were trying to escape, effectively handing them over to the Libyan forces on the ground. There are still unanswered questions about what happened to uh, Colonel Qaddafi, how was he killed, how did he die. Uh, but uh, uh, clearly, I think, were it not uh, for uh, external intervention in, in Libya by the role of NATO, uh, the rebels in Benghazi uh, may not have been able to achieve uh, their objective. NATO's UN mandate was to protect Libyan civilians, but it quickly became to get rid of Qaddafi and prop up a government which is now in power only thanks to the support of the Allied forces. And I think we'll see uh, not a new democracy in Libya, but a new reorganization of the Libyan political and economic uh, institutions to the benefit of those who brought the National Transition Council to, to power. It will be for the benefit of the United States oil companies, for the benefit of the British and the French and perhaps the Italian oil companies. Uh, they're the big winners here. In the meantime, Western leaders are celebrating Libya's transition to democracy. Without putting a single U.S. service member on the ground, we achieved our objectives. What the U.S. president did not mention in his celebratory speech was scores of Libyans killed in NATO strikes. Widespread violations of human rights are reported in today's Libya. There is no water insert. There is no uh, medication. Even oxygen in the hospital uh, they don't have. The situation in Sirt, because I've seen it, I, I, I can assure to you, uh, if you send journalists to, to, the, to the city now, it's, it's, it is a disaster. It is a catastrophe. Libya is now brimming with weapons. Experts say extremists have most likely gotten their hands on the vast armories left untended. As for Libya's transition to democracy, the people who are now in power there have not been chosen by the Libyan people. And many Libyans fear that when the time comes to vote, the choice will have already been made for them. I'm Gainesh Chekhan reporting from Washington. RT.